again, my name is Jade Pope. I go by he, him pronouns, and this is a piece I wrote called Waiting. Some of you probably saw my vagina monologue last spring term. A boy period. It was such a powerful experience for me, and it really allowed me to grow as both a person and a performer. And from what I've heard, it made a lot of people cry, so I'm guessing it was pretty profound for others too. Ever since that performance, I've been asked to perform it again and retell how I peed in the men's restroom while on my period and talk about how my vagina terrified me almost as much as testosterone-induced infertility. To talk about how heartbroken I was and still am that I will never have kids through me. Not exactly my favorite things to talk about. But honestly, if I could re-perform my monologue, I would. I really wish I could, because even as painful as it was going up on stage and sobbing about the things that people forget I deal with every day, it's something I want people to know. As quiet of a person as I am, I really love sharing parts of myself with others, and I want people to know what it's like. I think it's really important for people to know me when I'm vulnerable. But I can't do a boy period. It's not that I'm stubborn. It's that I have a different story to tell now. I'm not the same Jade that was on stage that night. Since that performance, I've grown into someone that I never thought I would reach. On July 8th, 2014, I had a nurse give me my first injection of testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am now self-injecting 0.5 milliliters every two weeks and nearing my five months on testosterone mark with a terribly awkward chin-haired rubid. <laughs> <laughs> I film videos of me laughing with friends, sound like the voice of a stranger, and I'm really loving the surprising amount of body hair I've gained. <laughs> Still working on the mustache, though. <laughs> when I hit two months, my cycle stopped. It wasn't as climactic as I thought it would be. It's more like something that you forget is missing until you get an automated notification from your menstrual cycle calendar app that asks, where have you been? We missed you this month. <laughs> My app has stopped notifying me, and I'm stuck with an unopened pack of pads shoved in the far corner of my closet. Sometimes it hurts where it used to when I was about to start bleeding. The familiar menstrual cramps. At first, there was always a moment of panic that I hadn't actually stopped my cycle and that was going to bleed through my pants, that I had gotten too comfortable not carrying around pads and hidden pockets, and it was just my luck to be stuck in class with light-colored pants. After two months, I realized that it was really gone. The dull pain still resurfaces once in a while where it used to, but it's just an echo in a shell. I don't really know what or how to feel about my cycle stopping. I'm not surprised and I'm not depressed. I'm not as happy as I thought I would be. I mean, not that I'm not happy. I really love not having to deal with it. I mean, it triggered my dysphoria and it's a hassle. But it's not like I jump up and down every morning celebrating the fact that it's gone. I actually don't think that's what transition is like, really. I remember watching videos of people on YouTube who would document their monthly testosterone anniversary and it would be so enthusiastic. Now I watch my own transition videos and I just look tired and upset and I have to write four papers by the weekend because I spent too much time editing selfies and adjusting my Tumblr thing. <laughs> it's not that I'm not happy or excited, it's just that I don't really see the changes. They're so subtle and they happen so slowly over months and months that I just forget. I don't remember my voice being higher than it is now, and I honestly can't imagine it either. I don't know when my voice got this deep, and to me, it's just my voice. Transitioning is so natural for me. It's how I've always felt it was supposed to be. I'm changing the way I was supposed to, and things are falling into place. 
Recently, I went to Cumbies to buy some cigarettes. When I went up and asked for a pack, the woman at the counter asked to see my ID as usual. I handed it to her and after she asked me to recite my birthday and address in California, which was a new addition, she told me that she can't actually sell it to me because it was invalid. I was really confused and took my friend aside to double check my ID to see if anything was wrong. My other friend went ahead and bought some bottles of soda while I was not so calmly fumbling with my ID and looked for any sign that someone may have pranked me and switched my real ID with a fake. The woman ended up calling me back and told me that it's okay, she thinks it's a fake, but she's gonna forget about it. <laughs> we quickly exchanged money in six and I was still really confused about what just happened. Huh. My friend, who was buying soda, pulled me aside and told me that the woman working at the register was confused about my gender. That's when I realized that my ID says F for female. She thought I was lying. She thought I was some dude who fucked up a fake and put himself down as a female for shits and giggles. <laughs> that would be a terrible joke, and I like to think I'm funnier than that. <laughs> but... I guess while my friend was buying soda, the girl asked her if I was a boy or a girl, and my friend said boy. I guess it clicked with her that I'm transgender? I'm, no, I'm not really sure what happened, and to be honest, as happy as I am that I passed so well that she thought my ID was fake, I'm still not sure how to feel about it. I mean, there's just so much that I'm thinking about. There's the concept of passing, which forces people to conform to a gendered presentation in order for them to be acknowledged as the gender they identify with. I wouldn't pass nearly as well if I went around wearing a dress, and that sucks. I mean, I never really liked wearing dresses, but like, who knows, maybe someday I'll totally rock a pair of heels and a skirt. I wouldn't be any less of a man. And what exactly is a man? I mean, what does it mean to be one? Whenever I think about this, I'll, I just hear, I'll make a man out of you in my head. <laughs> I think about all the stupid things that people use to separate women and men and women, and how women cry and men don't. Men can cry. It's just a stupid concept, and I get so worked up about all the ridiculous things that people say, and I feel like crying, and I can't. I can't cry. This may sound like bullshit, but anyone who knows me knows that I'm a big crier. I cry watching depressing documentaries on Netflix. I cry when I hug my dad goodbye at the airport. I cry when someone looks at me wrong. <laughs> or at least I used to. I've tried so hard. I've sat in my room, I've listened to sad music, I've thought about all the bad things that happened that day, and all I can do is get a couple tears out before my body shuts it down and I'm just stuck sitting on my bed, feeling vaguely numb and depressed. Since starting testosterone, the mere thought of crying sends a shock through my body, a short burst of fear and anxiety, and then I physically feel my brain run away from what my heart is feeling. I don't know how I feel anymore. I can't sit quietly and analyze my feelings in solitude. I feel a literal wall build up in me and I get angry. I get fussy and angsty and restless and furious and you know what? I'm scared that I feel anger more easily than sadness. I scare myself sometimes because as much as I know myself, at the same time, I actually don't. I'm changing so fast, so subtly, and my body is being so secretive, like it's not letting me in on what it's dealing with. It's all a secret that I should know, because it's mine, but I can't face it. I can't know what my brain is processing, and my heart hurts. It hurts a lot. And it hurts even more knowing that while I was writing this on my computer, I knew I wasn't going to cry while giving this speech, and I can't show anyone how much it hurts. Growing up, I would hide my feelings because I was shy. I remember the walls I built. I remember starting to date and how my partners got angry at me because I wouldn't let them in. I remember someone once told me that I was insensitive, that I didn't feel. I cried for weeks in the privacy of my room until I processed the fact that the person wasn't worth my tears. 
I can't even do that now. I can't process the way I used to. I can't waste my tears on idiots who misjudge me. I just wait. For what? There will be no end to my transition. I have a lifetime prescription for testosterone. I will do this for the rest of my life unless I decide otherwise. There isn't a timeline that breaks down when things will happen or stop for me. When will I grow a beard? When will the phantom menstrual cramp stop? When will I start crying again? Will I ever? I don't know. So I just wait. I wait. I wait. I wait. I wait.